What is cracking guys, JP here again, bringing you another update of my 90 gallon reef tank build. So today and yesterday, I got a lot of stuff done. So we'll get to this. First thing, the stand in, or the floor is not level. Uh, this corner right here is too high because how I know it is I left some water and when I drained it, there I can't see no water line over here, but I can see one over here. And then on the other side, I can see a water line and a water line. So this is actually pretty low. So I need to raise this side and see if to increase that corner. I do have a plywood right here. So I have a yoga mat and then a plywood, half inch. So it's not the, uh, the stand itself, either the wood or the bottom of the stand. So maybe, we'll see. But at least I uh, got to level it first to make it safe in the future. Uh, next step is I ordered extra fans. I didn't like the big fans, the 120 millimeter. It was sticking out, see those old holes. Uh, half of the fan was covered by the wood. And I don't have a bigger hole. So I just ordered some 80 millimeter AC Infinity fan and put them in and it works just fine. The old fans, I am using them for exhaust, as you can see. You don't see the AC Infiniter, <laughs> Infinity uh, logo, so that fan is blowing air out. And then the other one is blowing air into the ballast and air inside to the aquarium. So we'll see how much evaporation I'll get. Um, just experimenting, I guess. We're in the basement, so I'm not worried about heat, but just uh, help some heat management. I might put it on a temperature control though, maybe. A nice thing about these are they come with a splitter. So as you can see, I just put them on that splitter, connect it with a smaller fan and a big fan, so I don't have a lot of cords. And I'm just using um, one power bar, so which is nice. All right. And to the sump, inside, I have added my dosing magnet holder. This is the Aquamax DTH dosing tube holder, which is nice, made in Taiwan, Taiwan, <laughs> pretty nice. Um, I might put it there, I don't know, we'll see. I don't have a lot of space in the back of the wall and the sump, so I don't want to risk that magnet falling down. I know I could uh, just increase, uh, put it down and move it up with the magnet but I don't want to scratch the paint in the back so I have the uh, magnet inside the uh, filter section or the filter sock section and then the other side I have my ATO the Avast Marine sensor emergency float and then here's the uh, tubing for the RO tubing and I have my custom cradle Aqua Gadget Nano Magnetic Probe Holder. What I like about this is they do have a little tube holder right there. So I'm gonna put my uh, heater or sensor right there. And then I have extra tubing, I mean tubing probe holder in the future. Just in case. <laughs> Maybe like a pH, um, like one of those Milwaukee pH uh, monitor or something. We'll see. No easy upgrade, right? In the future. Am I foreshadowing? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, there's some wires. Uh, I have some StarTech 3x3 cable raceway coming soon. I'm going to have to set up some drip loops in the future. So no fire. Here's some cable management I try to do. Um, uh, the mineral halide uh, cords is still coming. I ordered one of those uh, trip light, six foot. It's a EIC C13 to C14. So I tried to find the exact um, you know wire for this, but they don't come in the store. They're like um, manufacturerly made. Uh, for like uh, wholesale so yeah I did try to match it but I can't find it 
Um, there's the lines, all of these are connected to the 20 amp. So there's my metal halide, my extra electrical, extra electrical, and heater. And here's my pump and extra electrical down there. Inside, try to make it look nice. Look at that. Looking very good. No controller. Woo! Alright, we'll start from the top to bottom. So, metal halide, two ballast. There's my Ocean Duo controller. It's all kind of connected right now to the uh, each one. Uh, this is just backup in the future or future expansion. Here's my metal halide T5s and this is the fan power brick. So if when the T5s turn on, it will turn on and then the, ba uh, the ballast for the metal halide will turn on. So it's pretty cool already. Here's my ATO extra switch and a cabinet fan. Here's my return, the two controller for the pump and extra heater here. I'm gonna put a heater controller here from my aquarium and then the skimmer overflow control that's gonna be the uh with the timer with the you remember the icm um what is that delay on make that i made a long time ago i'm gonna use that in case if the skimmer overflow there's the plug-in for the skimmer doser 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 and calc and just like the 50 ml brs and I'll probably, we'll wait for the mag in the future. That expansion. Expansion card or slot. <laughs> and add more holes. May look nice. Very good. I might add like a little power strip down here or under the, uh, or right beside it here. We'll see. If I want to like, for example, uh, frag some aquarium of frags, um, I'll use the Dremel. So yeah, we'll see. All right, we'll go to the back. So I started doing some aquascape. I got some Marco rocks at Marine Depot. 45 pounds that they have a package. What's nice about them is they don't charge stacks and they actually arrived yesterday, so it's nice. Um, too bad they are getting bought up, bought out though, because they don't charge tax, so which is nice. That's like ten dollars tax or fifteen dollars tax. So yeah, too bad, man. Um, what I'm using is this E Marco four hundred. I tried super glue, didn't work, but they like this. I already ordered this from Marine Depot and they come with pretty simple instruction they are just mixing like grout except this is like hydraulic um, mortar I did try to buy these online I think it's like E Marco 400 and then another the uh, what is this the polymer but they were like $70 and then another $7 and then they're like 5 what is this this 50 pound bag I'm like I don't need that much so I uh, I'll just buy this <laughs> so yeah pretty simple uh, I added more water here as per instructions get some scales get this uh, water cup it's fill it up to the brim put it up and it was 500 I'm like, oh god that's perfect so well this hole is tiny so use a turkey baster to put water in and then use a spoon to just grab some mortar and put it here because if you just dump it in, you might dump so much of it. Oh God. So put some powder first and put very little liquid because it doesn't take a lot. And you want to just make it like grout basically. So yeah, nice. And let it sit for like two minutes to let that cook before using it. <laughs> and it takes about an hour to settle or an hour or two and then 24 hours to cure. So don't handle it so much you know until 24 hours to let it dry out just like grout literally so this is my aquascape i have taped up the floor i have my old cardboard from my 90 gallon aquion 
why I have that is so I can see how tall it is. So the plan is my aquarium is 24 inch high and that line is a 12 inch line. So I don't want my rocks to be higher than the 12 inch. So perfect. Um, this is just temporary and then this brown right here is temporary so that I can hold my ledge. So I'll actually have a big pile of rocks right here and a row of thirds. Thirds, not thirds. <laughs> and the ledge is going to be overhanging very nicely. To up out here and I'll have a coral over here overhanging. Like a tabling acro maybe, we'll see. Or a nice yellow acro, we'll see. Then I'll have a low spot here with a big, a big boulder to like, it only goes like this much. And I have small rocks here, here and there. And then I'll have like a big nice sand uh, view right here. But we'll see how big the big rock is and then I'll probably have to chisel that too. To make that uh, viewing angle. Um, yeah, and then this, I tried to make it look nice with some a lot of hiding spaces, not just a pile of rocks. So here we have our main channel. The water goes in there. There's some holes here. I know I'm gonna have a, maybe an inch of sand, maybe. We'll see. And then I have a big hole here. And then big channel over here. You can kind of see all the way through. I have a rock here for extra hiding places. A lot of holes they can go through. So yeah. This is actually an old coral from a friend they gave to me when they were breaking the aqua aquarium. It's like old coral, very porous. I tried to find a Pukani rock though, but they're not they're not available anymore. And then this is actually a one piece. But it broke. Good thing it broke because if it break in the aquarium, that would be a problem. Because I have to do this with the corals. Um, so I added a lot of the cement. And then add an extra support down here to make that nice arch. And then cemented here. And then cemented here. I actually have to chisel this part. Because it was sticking out like this much. It was just sticking out too much. So, got me some... Menards cold chisel with, you know, guard. You don't want to smash your hands unless you're that type of guy <laughs> or girl. But yeah, and then have some hammer. What you want to do is you can drill it with some uh, masonry bits, drill bit, and then just score the line and then start chiseling and it will s literally snap through the line. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's how I made it. Very, very flat. Look at that. Very nice. So I'll have like Acropora up here. Some nice sticks. <laughs> I can't believe I'm getting into sticks after six years in reef keeping. And I'll have maybe some LPS, some nice Gorgonian or some kind of, you know, to match it up. And here is some LPS, some Zoas or something here that lower light we'll see and I'm gonna try to keep the sand as uh, no corals so that it'll be a nice viewing area and then maybe I have some corals on the sand over here and there but not in the main drag so yeah all right well, that's a pretty long update well Everything's doing pretty well though. Alright, so thanks for watching guys. And happy reef keeping. Adios.